Well, my name's Edward D'Antonio, and I'm a professor at the University of South Carolina, Beaufort. And our college, it's a principally undergraduate university, and I run a research group alongside with teaching where I have undergraduates in my lab. And I focus on Chagas disease, and we also work with leishmaniasis as well. But um, my topic here, you know, we do drug discovery, and it's on uh, biological active inhibitors of trypanosoma cruzi that target glucokinase from structure-based drug design and high-throughput screening studies. So you're probably wondering, how does a person who works at an undergraduate university, how is that person able to carry out drug discovery work? And my answer to that, it's the people who you know. And I have um, a lot of international collaborators, and I have national collaborators, so I'm going to get to that. Here's a, a picture of Chagas heart disease. It's one you're going to have for someone who has the chronic stage. And they're just basically chest x-rays that a doctor would do. And um, as you can see, you know, this pan away, that's a normal heart, but it's someone who has Chagas disease. And as you progress through these images, you're basically having an enlargement of the heart. And that's, uh, you know, Chagas disease. Uh, the way that I see it, that's what's killing people. Um, so these are the two clinically available drugs. Uh, if you're a doctor, this is what you can give a patient, benzinidazole and nifertamox. And they're effective against the acute stage, but they're not really effective against the, uh, the chronic stage for reasons that we don't really know too well. It's actually, benzinidazole, let's talk about that. It's a very good drug, okay? Um, even though it was developed over 40 years ago, I mean, I've seen it work in mice. And it, on the acute level, you're going to have cure rates up to 80%. But when you get into the chronic stage, there's just issues. So the other problem is, and as you've seen uh, previous, uh, from the previous speaker, you're going to have toxicity problems, and you're going to have intolerable side effects. Uh, the intolerable side effects include allergic dermopathy, anorexia, peripheral polyneuropathy, and vomiting. And uh, if you're in the chronic stage, usually the doctor might have to discontinue the medication to the patient because they simply can't handle it. So with this being said, uh, there exists a need for new and improved drugs, and that was why I got involved, and this is what I wanted to do the research on. Now, I'm a biochemist by training and an x-ray crystallographer, and what I'm doing is, um, you know, I'm studying an enzyme called trypanosoma cruzi glucokinase, and it's an enzyme found in glycolysis. And here's a, a picture that shows you the... Uh, the cell biochemistry inside of a T. cruzi parasite. Okay, and they've got, uh, you know, enzymes just like we do. That red dot right there, that's going to be glucokinases, which could be either a hexokinase or a glucokinase. These two enzymes at the beginning here. And glycolysis is an essential pathway for the parasite. If it's not working properly, the parasite can die. So this is, you know, what's inspiring me to study this enzyme because if we could find an inhibitor for it, we can constrict the flow of substrates going through glycolysis and we could um, cause cell death. Now, here's a structure of t cruzi glucokinase or tc gluc. That's what I'll be calling it for now. Now, it's a dimer. Now, you're probably wondering in the human cell, don't they have a, you know, a glucokinase and a hexokinase as well? And they do, but they do not have dimers. They are simply monomers. So there is a little difference that we have, and there's also a 40% difference between human homolog and parasite homolog. Okay. So this is a first crystal structure, uh, PDB entry 2Q2R. And um, if we just take a look at the tertiary structure of TC gluc, you know, we, it's a, you know, we're going to focus here on the uh, active site and the mechanism for how glucose can go to glucose 6-phosphate essentially works by the hydroxyl at the 6-carbon of glucose 
that you see right here. And it's performing a nucleophilic attack to the gamma phosphate of ATP. So it's going to steal that phosphate group and become glucose 6-phosphate. So then it could go into the cell and continue to the next enzyme um, in glycolysis. So you have here a glucose binding site, and you also have an ATP binding site as well. In my work, I've got two projects I'm going to show you. The first project involves the structure-based drug design. Right. So what I did one day, I was sitting on my computer, and I said, well, let me, you know, we've got the PDB protein data bank coordinates for human hexokinase 4. You know, that's also known as the glucokinase. And I also have the uh, protein data bank file for Japanosoma cruzi glucokinase. So I use a program, and I superimpose the two enzymes on top of each other. And then I took a look in the active site and I noticed that there were some differences. So I had an idea for an inhibitor called H-POP glucosamine, where we would have an extension from the carbon-2 having a linker. Um, and I'll tell you why I had this idea. If you look at blue, blue is human. That's the human hexokinase 4. Brown is going to be your trypanosoma cruzi. That's our parasite of interest. At the outer active site of TCGLUC, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, there's not a lot of steric hindrance. But in the human version, there are these two loops. And these two loops, it's, it may be hard to see, but they're right here. You have this loop right here and a loop right there. So you don't, you see, you don't see this bottom loop here in the cheek cruising. So I thought, let's use these structural features as a way to design an inhibitor, so that's how I came up with HPOP. So I then modeled it in, and this is all hand modeling. This is not even data. This is just me on the computer playing around. And you realize that in human, you get a lot, bunch of steric clashes with nearby residues, but you don't get that here in the trypanosoma cruzi. So I got uh, very excited about this, and HPOP was our starting point, HPOP being uh, this one right here. Now, there's the one to the left of it, CBZ glucosamine, and then you have Ben's glucosamine. Before you start synthesizing something, you just buy it. You know, so these two on the left, you know, Ben's and CBZ, they were commercially available. So I immediately bought them, and I wanted to see if it would work, test out my hypothesis. The one on the right came a little bit later uh, because things did work. And at the moment, we were able to grow a crystal of TC gluc in our lab so that we could do x-ray crystallography experiments. And that's a, an example of a crystal that we grow in our lab um, by the undergraduates. And then once we soak in our inhibitor, we then mail them off to the advanced photon source in Chicago. And I've got a collaborator there. Her name's Dr. Kay Perry. And she will basically screen all my inhibitors, or all my crystals, um, by shooting x-rays at them, giving me the data, and then I work the data up in my office. Okay, so then um, we were able to get CBZ glucosamine to bind, and it had submicromolar enzyme inhibition. Um, one of my students named Mason, or sorry, Sean, <laughs> he, um, he did a, uh, an enzyme inhibitor assay, you know, where he made this plot, and we're getting a KI value of 0.7 micromolar. Okay, so the... Uh, and then from the soaking experiments of the crystallography, we were able to get CBZ bound in the active site. And I then pursued the other ones. We had to do a, a chemical synthesis of two of the compounds. And we were also able to get those to bind in the active site as well. And as you can see from this little table over here, you have TC gluc and the human hexokinase 4. And we ran the enzyme inhibitor assays on both because I wanted to look at selectivity. And it turned out that CBZ and HPOP had very high selectivity ratios. And this was very exciting because it proved our hypothesis that the steric hindrance was, you know, it was going on in, in the human, and we were able to selectively bind these inhibitors in the TC gluc. 
So how are the parasites going to be detected? Because we want to take this to the next level. You know, getting enzyme inhibitor data, that's fine, but you know, to make a nice publication, we need to, we need to do in vitro work and in vivo work. So I've got a collaborator at New York University, and her name's Dr. Ana Rodriguez, and she's a, a fantastic collaborator. Um, she basically does, uh, she performs acute mouse infectivity with T. cruzi parasites uh, using a transgenic luminescence assay. So basically she's just taking T. cruzi and she's going to put a firefly uh, luciferase gene, you know, that is going to be luminescent. So for every parasite you see, you're going to have a luminescent signal. And she could do in vitro assays for me or in vivo by infecting mice. Um, and that was her key paper for the study there. Well, we looked at all four of these <coughs> compounds from the structure-based drug design, and three of the compounds were not active. However, benzglucosamine was a biologically active compound, giving us a, a KI, or a, an IC50 uh, of 16 micromolar. And a side-by-side -side comparison here with benzenidazole, having a an IC50 of 1.12 micromolar, okay? So although the, the ones that were, what we thought were gonna be working well, uh, they didn't actually perform too well, but it was sort of like a hidden thing that we found. Um, so what I did next was I wanted to do a maximum tolerable dose study where you take a mouse and you take Ben's glucosamine because that was our winner compound and we wanted to we wanted to inject the mouse uh, or the mice with this compound for a 10-day period. So on the columns, you're going to see days, so going from 0 to 10. Um, and it's just a, a heat map showing, you know, violet has no symptoms, but then going to red, very toxic. Um, and the, the doses uh, were 60 mg per kg, 90 mg per kg, 120 mg per kg, and 150 mg per kg. Um, we wanted to just see when the mouse, you know, it didn't like uh, this kind of drug. And it turns out that you start seeing a lot of toxicity around 120. Then Anna had one of her technicians inject mice with uh, parasites. And then over an eight-day course, we would inject with different dosages of Ben's glucosamine. We've got one here of 120 mg per kg as two separate um, you know, shots per day at 60 mg per kg, one in the morning and one um, at night. And in yellow, we've got Ben's glucosamine at 90 mg per kg, and it worked. Um, blue is our vehicle control uh, with parasites through the days, you know, but uh, as we injected uh, Ben's glucosamine, we're starting to see parasite suppression. So that was a, a real good thing that we found out in our lab. Um, now the next uh, project, and I'll be very brief here, we did a high throughput screening campaign on TC Gluc. And I have a collaborator uh, you know, in Brazil, and I went to his lab and we worked on it. We screened 13,040 compounds from the, pr from the primary high throughput screen. Um, and then we used a computer program to find identical hit or to do a structure search from a, another library that he had of 30,000 compounds. And we came out with 122 unconfirmed hits that we then did the confirmatory assays in which we came out with 44 compounds that were confirmed inhibitors of TC Gluc. At the end of the day, we ended up with four hit to lead compounds. The assay that we did uh, is shown here on the left, and my collaborator is Dr. Artu Cordero at Centro Nacional de Pesquisa em Energia e Materiais. And we did the project in three months. And um, here were the core fragments of identified clusters. So we've got 44 confirmed hits, and these are six cluster groups showing you know, of those 44 compounds where we're getting a lot of binding to T. cruzi glucokinase, right? 
Then we had five singletons. Okay. So these are our four winter compounds from this, and they're all modestly potent inhibitors. Uh, the two best compounds were compounds 2B and 2A. And in column two, you see IC50. That's with in vitro, um, you know, IC50s against T. cruzy parasites, you know, on a, a 96 wall plate. And we're getting values like two micromolar. Um, and it correlates well with the second IC50 where we did the inhibitor assays. So from this, we're, we're going to proceed to in vivo studies after I get some more grant money. And, uh, but it, it's, it's sort of like an ongoing process. It's a way that, you know, as a, a scientist, I'm just trying to build my career. I'm just my fourth year into it. And I'd like to thank uh, my, my student, uh, James Lanier, who's over there. And he's, you know, brings a lot of energy to our lab and uh, my collaborators and funding. So uh, thank you all. <laughs>